aboard his boat, the mariner urinates into a cup, then pours it into a machine that processes it into drinkable water. After quenching his thirst, he rinses his mouth and spits the water into a pot, nurturing a lime plant. Upon detecting the sound of the underwater harpoon, he hastily loads up ball bearings into a device before plunging it into the ocean depths. After a period of time, when the bearings are depleted, the device automatically hoists the mariner back to the surface. He emerges with various items salvaged from the ocean floor, including a pair of metallic shoes and a damaged lighter. Upon regaining his footing, he confronts another drifter. However, the drifter assures him of his peaceful intentions, evidenced by his decision not to invade his boat while he was in the ocean. The mariner cautions him, stating that although he recognizes the boat, he doesn't recall seeing him before. When asked if he needs anything, the drifter declines, stating he's well supplied from his recent visit to an atoll. Suddenly, they are interrupted by the arrival of a group of smokers. Before leaving, the drifter reveals he has stolen all the mariner's limes. This revelation prompts the mariner to raise his impressive sails, providing his boat with a burst of speed that allows him to forcefully collide with the drifter's boat, leaving him to the mercy of the approaching smokers. The mariner sails to an atoll, impressing them with dirt, a very valuable commodity. When asked where he found it, he says that he obtained it from a group of people who have since been killed. As the mariner prepares to depart the atoll, a couple approaches him with an unusual request. They wanted to impregnate their daughter in an attempt to diversify their gene pool. When he refuses, they suspect that he might be a spy for the smokers. This prompts the atoll's guards to prevent him from leaving. When they inspect him, they discover gills behind his ears, revealing that he's a mutant. When he attempts to flee into the water, they ensnare him in a fishing net and subsequently imprison him in a cage. A friendly yet eccentric inventor named Old Gregor pays a visit to Enola, a little girl who lives with Helen, despite not being her biological daughter. Enola bears a mysterious tattoo on her back, which stirs speculation about it being a map to the elusive dryland. Enola, under the watchful eyes of Helen and Gregor, sketches an image that resembles a horse. However, having never seen a horse, they are unable to identify it, and even Enola herself is unaware of what she has drawn. This inexplicable ability of hers to draw unknown objects is therefore perceived as a unique gift. Intrigued by the tattoo on Enola's back, Gregor turns to the mariner for answers, hypothesizing that a catastrophic event caused by humans centuries ago might have led to the world being submerged in water, and the tattoo is the map to the only part that remains unsubmerged. As the mariner attempts to convince Gregor to release him from the cage, the guards intervene, forcing Gregor to retreat before he can act. Shortly after, weary of the mariner's mutant nature, the leaders of the atoll sentence him to death by immersing him in a pool of sludge. Simultaneously, a lookout spots the smokers approaching the atoll. This sighting triggers a wave of panic among the atoll's residents, who hastily begin to fortify their defenses. The smokers, armed in riding jet skis and mechanized boats, launch an assault on the atoll. They use ramps to invade it, causing chaos and destruction. In the midst of this mayhem, one of the smokers crashes into the mariner's cage, allowing him to escape with the help of Helen. During all of this, an accident causes Gregor's gas balloon to inflate prematurely, forcing him to fly out all by himself. Now that she's saved his life, Helen convinces the mariner to take her and Enola on his boat. While trying to escape, Enola almost falls into the water, but Helen hangs on to her, saving her life. Succeeding in opening the gate, the three eventually manage to escape on the mariner's boat. In a brilliant move, the mariner uses a harpoon to redirect one of the smoker's boats, causing it to fire at another boat of theirs, causing it to explode. However, their leader, the deacon, manages to barely escape by jumping out of the boat in the last second, losing an eye in the process, before being rescued by another boat commandeered by his men. Helen insists that the mariner takes her to dryland, to which he reluctantly agrees just to get her to be quiet, even though he doesn't believe it actually exists. However, he grapples with the harsh reality that he might need to kill Enola as they don't have enough resources for all three of them to survive, and Enola, being a child, is the least useful to him. This causes a fight between the mariner and Helen, who takes it upon herself to protect Enola from all dangers. Amidst the palpable tension, Helen attempts to seduce the mariner to convince him to let them live, but he, sensing her lack of genuine interest in him, rejects the advance. On the smoker ship, the deacon reveals that his goal is to find and capture Enola so he could decipher the map on her back and finally reach dryland. However, he faces an imminent threat as her ship is running out of fuel. Enola, in her youthful curiosity, tries to use the mariner's chalk to draw on his boat. He angrily stops her, but she defiantly tells him that he doesn't frighten her. In response, he throws her into the water, causing her to almost drown as she doesn't know how to swim. Helen hurriedly jumps into the water to save Enola, leading to the mariner regretting his actions and turning the boat around to rescue them. 
Their journey takes a dangerous turn when the smokers attack them with the plane. Helen, displaying remarkable aim, manages to harpoon the boat onto the plane, killing the gunner in the same shot. However, because of its attachment to the plane, the boat is now out of control, almost killing everyone on it, but fortunately, all three manage to survive. Afterward, Mariner sternly warns Helen not to touch anything on the boat from now on. Enola interjects, suggesting that he should be nicer to Helen, who had already apologized for firing the harpoon. Having had enough of her attitude, the Mariner cuts Enola's hair, not only to punish her, but also to change her appearance so that the other drifters wouldn't recognize them. Next, the Mariner comes across another drifter eager to trade. The drifter presents paper, another valuable commodity, but demands Helen and Enola in return. The Mariner staunchly declines his proposition. Recognizing the potential value of the paper, Helen agrees to spend 30 minutes with the drifter in exchange for it. Concerned for Helen, the Mariner makes a decision to kill the drifter. As hunger begins to take hold, the Mariner resorts to a cunning strategy. He dives into the water, presenting himself as bait for a gigantic fish. The fish swallows him whole, but inside its belly, the Mariner uses his portable harpoon to slay it from within. Having protected and fed them, the Mariner earns the affection of Helen and Enola. They share a moment as they eat, with the Mariner finding unexpected joy in their company. The following morning, Helen awakens to the cheerful sight of the Mariner teaching Enola how to swim and hold her breath underwater. When questioned about the origin of his unique equipment and all the dirt he finds, the Mariner decides to reveal a secret to Helen. He places her in an air pod and takes her deep underwater. Breathing comfortably with his mutant gills and swimming with his webbed feet, he takes her to the very bottom of the ocean. While using flares to illuminate the darkness, he shows her the remnants of drowned cities, leaving her amazed. Upon their return to the surface, they find Deacon on their boat. He threatens to kill Helen, forcing the Mariner to jump with her underwater, breathing air into her mouth so she could breathe. When they resurface, Enola has been kidnapped by the Deacon. This leads Helen to say that she still believes there's a dry land, as she found Enola in a basket filled with rich, dark dirt, and all her drawings indicate that she has memories from when she was younger on land. Having developed feelings for the Mariner and still turned on by their underwater kiss, the two make love on the boat. Hope is restored when Gregor unexpectedly arrives on his balloon and transports Helen and the Mariner to a boat filled with survivors from the atoll. Upon questioning the Mariner about the meaning of the map on Enola's back, it is revealed that the map is inverted. This revelation is confirmed by a piece of paper he discovered at the bottom of the water. Upon examining the paper, Gregor identifies a similarity between the language on the paper and that in Enola's tattoo. The discovery aids him by deciphering the coordinates, potentially leading them to dry land. Plagued by guilt over Enola's abduction, the Mariner embarks on a sole rescue mission on a jet ski. Meanwhile, the Deacon scientists struggle to decode Enola's tattoo. During his speech, the Deacon incites frenzy among his people with his prophetic vision of reaching dryland, guided by Enola's tattoo. Enola, however, instills fear in his men with never-ending tales of the terrifying Mariner, who she claims will come to her rescue and annihilate them all. In a stealthy move, the Mariner infiltrates the lower part of the ship and confronts the Deacon, threatening to blow the ship up if Enola is not freed. Thinking that the Mariner is bluffing, the Deacon refuses. This leads the Mariner to throw a flare into the ship's fuel tank, causing it to explode. As the ship is now demolished, the Deacon tries to escape with Enola in an airplane. However, the Mariner uses a grapple hook to quickly catch up and crash the plane, saving Enola. Gregor and Helen arrive in the nick of time with their balloon. They manage to pull up the Mariner and Enola with a rope, just as the Deacon attempts to climb up as well. However, Helen thwarts his efforts by throwing a bottle at him, causing him to plummet into the water. Surviving the fall, the Deacon fires his gun at Enola, resulting in her falling from the balloon. Displaying remarkable agility, the Mariner makes an acrobatic leap, with the rope attached to the balloon to rescue her. Upon realizing that the directions on the tattoo are reversed, and finally understanding the language, Gregor is able to navigate towards dry land accurately. After a considerable period of time, the Mariner is taken aback when a seagull lands on the balloon. This is followed by the sight of a large island teeming with greenery, fresh water, and horses. Upon entering a hut on the island, they discover the skeletons of two people next to a music box. Enola seems to recognize the music box, indicating that these were her parents. They had realized the impending doom and had tattooed her and sent her away to ensure her survival and to help others find land. While everyone else seems to be relishing the land, the mariner feels out of place. He decides to leave, expressing to Enola that he isn't meant to be on land. Enola, saddened by his departure, gives him the music box as a parting gift and runs away in tears. The Mariner finally bids farewell to Helen with a passionate kiss before returning to the water.